What if I told you that within Blender Cycles, there was actually a secret? Now, I know you probably think this is like a clickbaity title, but actually this feature has been hidden within Cycles since 3.1, and it's actually a great denoising feature that I've been waiting to be added to Blender forever, and apparently it's been there all along, hidden under the developer extras. But enough teasing you, it's called temporal denoising. Now, half of you are probably like, yes, temporal denoising. And the other half of you are probably like, what's temporal denoising? So currently what happens when you render a single frame in Blender is that it will take a noisy image like this, and then it will take the denoising albedo information, and it will also take the denoising normal and possibly the denoising depth information. It will combine that information into the computer with the render denoising engine of choice, in this case, optics. And then it will use that information to output what it believes to be the best denoised image it can provide for that single frame. Now this is great, but the problem comes when you start doing multiple frames at once. Now the problem comes when you play back animation, because what it's doing is determining the best solution for the noise pattern each frame. So that means it's different each frame. So that when you play it back, you get this kind of boiling effect where it gives you this kind of noise jitter. Now the solutions to this vary, but they can be kind of difficult. So for example, Blender Studio actually rendered out their backgrounds as images, projected that onto geometry, and then used that so it didn't have to deal with all the kind of micro geometry details. And that can significantly help reduce kind of boiling. However, that's a very complicated setup and hard for most individual artists. Now I have the luxury of being on an NVIDIA card that's very powerful. So what I do is just crank the sample rate super high. But I know that's not an option for everybody. And this is where temporal denoising can really actually help save you time on your renders. So what it does is instead of looking at a single frame every time it renders, it looks at a big chunk of frames. And then what it does is determine the best noise pattern across all of those frames. And then by doing that, it eliminates that kind of boiling effect. So you can actually render your scenes at lower sample rates or skip these kind of complex processes trying to avoid this denoising boiling pattern, which allows you to get a faster result and a more pleasing result. So let's take a look at exactly what this looks like. Now I've made this really ugly example here because this is just kind of a prime example of where you're likely to get boiling data, which is on these kind of micro details on a depth of field background. So. I know YouTube compression ruins this, so I'm gonna show you another method so you can see this better in a second, but bear with me here. You can see that as I play forward, that there's just a lot of jitter, noise, and kind of boil in these kind of hair particles. If I go ahead here and I turn on the temporal denoising, you can see that it's a bit smoother. Now I know with YouTube compression may be hard to see, so I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm going to turn on the difference mat here. And you can see here, that it has actually made quite a bit of difference in the data that it is kind of smoothing out. So let's take a look at how we can do this in Blender. I also wanna say that next week is the spring sale on Blender Market, and I'm actually putting my crafty asset pack on sale early, coupon code in the description below. Also wanted to announce that I'm working on a little free add-on that if I can get working correctly, I'm gonna give out for free. So stay tuned for that. I'll be talking more about that in upcoming videos. So here we are in Blender, and in order to enable temporal denoising, you're gonna need to do a few things. So first of all, I'm on render engine cycles with my feature set set to experimental. My device is at GPU complete. What you're going to want to do is come down here to your render denoise settings. Make sure denoise is checked on. Have optics denoising and with your passes set it to albedo and normal. Now what you're going to do is come up here to your output settings. You're going to go ahead and change this to an open EXR multi-layer format. And then you're going to want to come down here to color management and set this to whatever color space you are working in. Great, now come up here to the passes section. And what you're going to do is include the combined pass, the vector pass, and the denoising data pass. Then you can come up here to your edit, preferences, come under here under interface, and you're going to need to enable developer extras here. This will allow you to access the operator that will execute the temporal denoising. Great. So then what you're going to do is you're going to render your scene. And I've gone ahead and done that. And you can see here that I have these EXR list. So after you've rendered it, it will have your EXR files. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna come here to search 
and you're going to search for denoise animation. Now, if you haven't followed the steps above, this will not appear. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click denoise animation. Now, what this is going to do is it is going to look at the AXR files that you've rendered with the multi-pass and it is going to use that pass data that you have provided to then do a temporal denoising pass across these. And this is actually using optics NVIDIA technology as well to use their temporal denoising. So when you click that, you're going to notice that your whole screen freezes and it's not most likely not frozen unless you get a crash but what it is going to do is then go through all those exrs and it is going to do temporal denoising and then it will just rewrite over those exrs now what you can do is you can come over here to the scripting and you can actually enter that same data but what you want to do is check this console this context console here and you'll see that it says denoising completed and that's how you know that it successfully ran the denoising. And then when you go back and review your animation, you can see just like I have here, that it will kind of provide a better variation. Now, if you don't have software that can look at EXR files, you can actually come over here to the compositing tab. I'm gonna go ahead and take this here, delete this render layer. You can actually use an image input here You can select everything and this will give you an image sequence. And you can see here that EXR files work in Blender. So you can actually run this back into your composite and then just re-render as a different format. So you can come over here and change your output file to say PNG. And then when you hit Control F12 or tell it to render your animation, what it will then do is kind of re-render your denoised frames as a PNG sequence or whatever format you want to have. So that's how you can go about kind of getting those EXR files in a more usable format for you. Now, I know this was kind of a long winded intro, but I really wanted to explain the difference between temporal denoising and kind of single denoising and this effect. So I hope you found this video informative and helpful. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And as usual, thank you for watching.